The 787 is very customizable in real life. So I'm going to show you the recommended settings, well, by me anyway, my Ignite 787. So as you can see, I've briefly powered up the aircraft here. And so once you power up the plane, once you power up the EFP, it'll look like this. But where on earth do you access the settings? Well, coming down here, go settings. Most of this will be defaulted, and so you won't have to change the majority of this. But this, these are the settings minus the engine type because obviously that changes depending on the livery and flight you're flying. This is what I'd recommend. I've got a second page here. So mass units, obviously, if you are American or do live in a, and then you can obviously go to pounds, pound kilograms here. Shared barrow, that's that's a quick thing that saves your time massively. It means that as you change one Q and H or altimeter. It will also change it on, on all three, on the standby and on the co-pilot side. Lengths, meters, units, obviously, or you do want to go onto feet, then sure. But anyway, this is just what I'd recommend. Uh, use roll for NWS. What that does is basically it prioritizes, like well, searches basically for the axis that's being used. So at the moment I am on your, so as you move my rudder pedals, they do also act for the nose wheel steering there. But if you don't have rudder pedals, then you can, it will just go to, go to roll here and that will that will act on the nose wheel steering and on the rudder pedals there so i would recommend to keep it on auto but do play around go to force if it doesn't work so if you do have a tiller axis then that will act as the axis for nose wheel steering there it goes tiller then it goes yaw then it goes uh, roll you can't use keyboard bindings for for acting for acting yaw and nose wheel steering in this plane little thing and then barrow default units again hectopascals use pitch brake i've turned it off because it can be quite annoying when you push in but it's quite useful i can see that basically when you push forward on yoke or joystick whatever you're using it will, it will apply the brake that's a really useful thing and one of the most important things i think here is disconnect all throttle at idle so it basically means that if you do fly like you're meant to fly an approach when you're landing with the auto throttle on then it does mean that when you do want to flare you bring back the throttles and it will disconnect and that actually make the throttles go to idle i've noticed that it didn't before so i'd recommend keeping that on it will really help you landing because otherwise this plane can float a huge amount especially when you're on on the usual throttle setting so i'd recommend having that and practicing more because that does that is what happens in real life so in real life you just have auto throttle engaged like this but have your hands on thrust levers so even though all throttle would be engaged you could still bring the throttles down to idle and so the engines down to idle power so that's basically how they land engine type obviously that varies as i said earlier from flight flight helpful pointers that just means that if you do have the engines on i'll show you here actually so I'm just going to demonstrate the helpful pointers here. So notice how we do now have our engines on, but helpful pointers will basically come across here. So there you go. You might want to have the beacon lights on whilst the engines are running. That's the sort of thing they do. And I think there's a few other things, something with transponder and a couple of other things like that. So that's what helpful pointers are. I just keep it on. It's on by default, I think. And then show glass. That's if you don't want reflections here. So if we just turn, I know we're kind of messing up the plane here. So what glass basically does, it's for the reflections and it's also for the dirt, I think. Um, so if you, it's now on, but if you turn it off, you can now see there's no dirt. So there was dirt here. Let's turn it on again. You can see dirt is different amounts and different liveries. So livery creators can specify the amount of like dirt that they do want on the screen there. I would recommend keeping it on. Also means that you do see the glass up here, like the glass panels. It's a bit weird up here, as you can see at the moment, because the glass is off. But if you turn it on, it looks much better. You can actually see stuff. So I'd recommend to keep it on basically. Visible numbers, not sure what that is. But cabin seats, obviously if you want to improve performance or if you're pretending that there's a next gen 787 freighter, then sure. That conserves performance mainly as seats will get more, more demanding in the future as more stuff comes in. So seats keep on as you're flying a passenger jet, but also conserve a lot of performance if you turn them off. Uh, real time, IRS align time, IRS align time, 
obviously real time but it's up to you pause at top percent so that's also up to you but if you if you're sleeping obviously i'm doing a long haul flight then i'll probably keep, recommend to keep you on because you don't want to miss that descent as your flight here completely haywire heading horizon notice here how it's not actually on at the moment because we actually need to power up now so if you have been wondering what heading horizon here is here um just go to the next page of the settings section as we walk through all the settings here so what you have to do is you have to have fpv on so if you just click it here it works on i assume it works on this side as well anyway yeah so you just click it on there and so if you want to have like you see where it says 21 22 23 24 25 that's that's the heading um degrees there the bearing that you're traveling at at the moment so it just helps you in flight i guess but you've got to have the FPV on for that. If you don't want that, then you just switch it off and you can see there you don't have the heading horizon. I like to keep it on. Use these radios. Yep, I, that's up to you. I don't really know what those are. Keep them off. And I think the default settings are too off. Satcom, that depends on the airline. So different airlines, deliveries will have provided it and not provided it. This It's this little box here that makes you communicate satellites, obviously, to the ground. It's a new tech, I think. So AviTab, that's not enabled by default. So that's a key thing that you need to look at. So it will come like this. Do check out my other AviTab video on that. Yeah, I'd recommend keeping that on. And Angle of Attack Indicator, I don't know if that's on or not. I'll do default, but you can see there is a little Angle of Attack Indicator there that will help you in takeoff and landing they can clutter pft but it's completely up to you and how you fly in other jets as well like the zebos will have all these options and then performance debug that's only for developers i think so you take that there we go you can see we've just walked through all the settings there if you do have any questions on any further settings or anything in the plane do just drop some comments down below the video but yeah the 787 is very customizable in real life so different airlines choose to have for example the angle of attack indicator or or the horizon or many other things that you can default to have etc like ch checklist i think you can can choose to have implemented by Boeing and lots of other things you can just change the airlines do magically change so it really does lots of this does depend on the airline they might have obviously this is lots of simulator stuff a satcom for example as we talked about and a tablet but, and lots of inbuilt stuff like the angle of attack indicator horizon so yeah 787 is a very customizable plane so yeah that's why there are a few options here but obviously there are many more that could be added and i think the magnite is based upon turkish airlines that's why and a bit of tui i think as well so that's why lots of things are geared towards that environment anyway i hope you found that video useful if you have any requests for any future videos or tutorials please do drop them in the comments below and thanks for watching please do like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video